or three at all, which I didn't. But anyway, it's time for picks and bans for game number one, Jinair versus Anarchy, and there's a Zed man against Mickey, yeah, just... who has not yet connected, so he has no idea. <laughs> Just take that out right there. We've seen him go 10, 0, and 10 on this Zed in that game three versus Najin. So don't chance it. There's the Azir ban up against GBM. Ari taken out as well. So heavy bans at Mickey this game. GBM can play both Zed and Ari. So a bit of a surprise right there. But again, Anarchy, Zed, Ari, and Vlad have been the main champions that Mickey has used. Just setting it up for a first pick, Yasubo. That's what we're doing here. Yep, Janair. No. There, it's incoming. Watch out. Well, Mickey still hasn't connected, so I wonder if we're going to have to remake this when it's all said and done. But looks like we're getting through uh, bans at least for now. Callista, the ban against Jinair as well. Pretty standard stuff. And I really wonder, you know, will we see Ash here? We are on 5.9 this week. Uh, Victor is not available yet. Uh, Ash is, however. Someday so we'll Victor see. will be fixed. Yep. Actually, uh, word on the street is uh, coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. Okay. Well, I've heard that from Riot about no, a billion act times. Actually, next week. He's going to be available next week. Okay. For real. Okay. We got word. <laughs> Victor's coming. <laughs> All right. So, Nar ban for Jinair. That won't be available for Ixu. Ixu has been playing primarily Maokai and Hecarim, however. And what will the final ban be for Anarchy? Could ban that Rumble. Trace was quite bard. good on that champion. And the Bard... bard. They don't ban Bard. I want to see. Pick oh, they ban Bard. Oh. Damn it, Toa. Why do the pro teams do this to <sighs> us? They, it makes us so curious. I know, right? I mean, you know that Bard's got to be really good if everyone's banning it. The Gragas is a great pick. I mean, he's a great champion right now. It's a good takeaway from Lyra. And I don't think we're going to see Team Omalzahar unless this really is Team Dark 2.0. <laughs> and they have just completely given up on life. But that's not going to happen. Yeah, Mickey Ooh, has been yeah. known as a TF player. Yeah. He has a lot of solo queue TF games on the ladder. Would be a bit bold to pick it this early when GBM could get the counter pick, but they may just be thinking, keeping that in mind, at least for the moment. LeBlanc falling down the standings a little bit so far here. Do you think it's because uh, people are feeling Mid Morgana is such a good counter to that right now? No, I, I think people just, in terms of LeBlanc, I mean, GBM in the distant past has played Mid Morgana to a certain degree of effect, but it's it's just on these tanks, LeBlanc can have some issues. And if LeBlanc ever falls behind in the tank meta, she's never going to be able to kill anybody. That's and yeah, true. there has been some Mid Morgana play here in Korea as a counter, but there's going to be the Rumble as suspected for Trace alongside the Alistair. For Sweet. Yeah, Thresh. Alistar has been very good for uh, Sweet lately. Thresh and Rek'Sai on the other side. You know, Sweet, uh, Sweet actually has a 60% win rate with Janna in solo queue right now, which is pretty impressive to do on that champion. And Jinx wouldn't be a big shock, but I wonder what we're going to see from Anarchy. Is Miki going to throw down the Yasuo gauntlet? <laughs> <laughs> Let me oh, show you how I it's done, not. son. No, <laughs> he's not going to pick that champion up until the last one. Lucian, bit of a blind pick right here, but they may just try and go for some lane dominance with that Lucian yeah. Thresh lane and discourage any possible Sivir picks that might come in for Jinair. There's Hecarim, and that wouldn't be a surprise. Ixu has been prioritizing that champion. Yep. And it will be locked in. So the last two picks over to Jinair right now. Everybody wants to play Vayne against Anarchy. I saw it hovered over for just a second. <laughs> oh or if boy. you're not, Jin, everybody wants to just play Vayne all the time. That's true, yeah. Well, that is OQ, so. OQ likes to tumble into five people and die. Yeah, I think Sivir's still a very strong pick here with their composition. They have fantastic engage. And they can just go ahead and... We already know it's going to be Vayne. Vayne, sw or Vayne swap it. <laughs> Lane swap it uh, uh -huh. out in that particular situation so you're not quite so vulnerable to it, even though the Hecarim might get an edge just by having Smite in a lane swap situation. So it's gonna be. We know it's going to be Vayne. I'm sorry, guys. Spoiler alert. They're going to pick Vayne. I mean, there isn't a lot of ways to get back onto Vayne with this composition. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Yep, I nope. thought so, yeah. There we go. Yep. Okay. 
Right. Uh, no Yasuo. They are going to take the Lulu, and so at least they'll have some wave clear early. Oh, geez. But not a lot of wave clear overall in this composition. GBM going with the very safe pick in the mid lane. And this is sort of a weird Jugger Vein composition. Now, this is hard to work with Jugger because Vein is pretty low range and doesn't have that speed boost like Sivir does, but is going to be good with the Gragas. And that'll be a Vlad grab for Mickey. I really like watching Mickey play Vlad. And they should have known this Vlad was coming because he picked it into Space's vein in the game versus CJ and had that great little duel with Space in the bottom lane where he just pulled out of the Condemn. So Vlad's going to be a pretty strong pick against Vayne. It is difficult for Vayne to kill Vlad and wait out that trade with the transfusion and pop Vayne pretty easily. Yep, and uh, hopefully Mickey takes the right runes and masteries this time. Not with his Z kind of runes. It's the, the trick. I mean, like, it didn't hold him back too much apparently, but uh, still, you know, it's, it's better to go with AP. I agree with you. Yeah. Well, mid lane should be mostly farming. GBM will probably want to push that one up early. We'll see if Jin Air decides to lane swap in this particular situation or whether they want to go up against the Lucian, which might make their lives difficult. But again, the Gragas Vein synergy is extremely good. It's something that I've really liked seeing. It's something that's worked for Najin quite well. Just break somebody off, isolate them, let Vayne tumble through, take them out, and then chase into the enemy team. Yeah, Lyra is definitely going to have his hands full chasing Chaser around, making sure that his lanes are safe. We'll see if he can do it. We'll see if he can put on a little bit of pressure of his own here in the first game between Jyn Air and Anarchy. And Anarchy with another week to try to show off here, show they deserve their spot in Champion Summer. It's time to get in the game and find out if they can do that. Here we go. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Jyn'Air Green Wings versus Anarchy here in Champion Summer. And Gank by Mom bringing the Lulu into the mid lane here. And uh, I believe uh, in the past, GBM did have some of the highest AP we've ever seen on a Lulu. He's had over 1,000 AP on Lulu before yep. with a Medjai Soul Stealer. That was pretty funny to watch. It was early it was. on in the spring season. Yep, fond memories of AP support Lulu dancing through my mind during that game. <laughs> With 1,000 HP? Doing the damages. Oh, well, yeah, about 1,000 HP, that's no, true, AP. but a lot of AP as well. <laughs> yes. Don't worry, if you have 1,000 HP, those shields are really strong with all that AP. Well, good stuff. Good stuff indeed. So lane swap, looks like it will be coming in. Pilot going to dodge this. And this is a really interesting game uh, for me to watch Pilot because Pilot has been great on these caster AD carries, right? But hmm. he's not really been known for being able to play the auto-attacking ADs that well. And this is kind of the ultimate test of an auto-attacking AD carry. Are I you going so. to be able to use this vein effectively? You know, the sad thing is that this just reinforces all the veins in solo queue to keep being vain. <laughs> See that thread the other day? The vein spotting thread. Right, that was pretty good, actually. It was. It, it was, was pretty funny. It was accurate to my solo queue experiences. I enjoyed it. So lane swap coming in. No surprise. Both teams just going to freeze this wave, and we see junglers starting on the bottom side of the map. Red buff being taken first by Chaser, mm -hmm. and they're already pinging enemy red. So perhaps Rumble. And Gragas are going to take a stroll over there. And Alistair actually just going to walk in, check it out, find that nothing's going on. So we may see a bit of a contest right here. Thresh going to come late. Snowflower going to come late to the red buff. Uh, but he's not going to catch anybody because he thought they would go Krugs to red. And that's the and Samsung Thresh skin, too, I believe. It is. Yeah, it's wow. a brand new Samsung Thresh skin. Right. Snowflower going to try to channel his inner Mata this game. Well, Mata may be in China, but the Samsung Thresh is still in Korea. That's right. It's the only, it's the only Samsung thing, really, left from the World Championship team in Korea right now. Okay, so red to red start. Meanwhile, the duo heading down to the bottom side, so it looks like it will be three buffs right away for the Jin Air Green Wings. A little bit interesting pathing, actually, that Iksu and Lyra would come down to the bottom side. They 
as soon as they started pushing, they wanted to make sure that they denied this XP. Mm -hmm. So they were trying to punish a possible teleport coming in from Trace, but it's just not going to show up. So they broke that freeze. Are they going to transition this into a dragon after pushing up? And the answer is no. Lyra going to recall. So that was huh. a bit of a fail bait right there to try and get a teleport out of well, Trace and kill them under the tower, but Jin are not going to fall for it. Well, Song Yun is probably doing quite a bit of damage to that bottom turret as well, too. And speaking of Samsung, we saw their team recently kind of get a little bit of success trying to just be a fast-pushing team and you yep. know, maybe Anarchy trying to take a page out of that book. Well, Lear didn't stay around to attack the tower, and now they have two people in the top side, and they will be able to break this freeze, so they're responding. Yep. And same time, two members of Jin Air in the bottom lane doing much the same thing. So it's like we're all going to be even through this lane swap pilot. Wow, nice uh, damage from pilot onto Ixu there. He did get flayed once, but it was a good response. And here uh -oh. comes Chaser and GBM. Ixu in a little bit of trouble. There's a flash. Goes for the body slam, doesn't connect though. GBM flashing, gets bloodthirsty. Did he get him with the ignite? He did. GBM with the first one. Oh, but he's taken out by Snowflower as well too. Meanwhile, more action teleports coming in. This game is insane now. Lyra taking a big hit from Pilot there with those silver bolts, but it looks like he'll be able to get out. So GBM going deep for the first blood. <laughs> I, I approve. I like GBM. He was really fast on that roam right there because yeah. they were trying to punish them from overextending and they took some pretty bad trades under that tower but snowflower kept gbm underneath the turret after his flash had been blown <laughs> in order to make that play yeah great play but still gbm is the one who picks up the first blood right there and the kill going over the support not going to be quite so impactful and gbm didn't really miss any cs right there either the tower just starting to pick that up in the mid lane mickey Still lurking there, going after the Rift Scuttler, it would appear. Just running around, transfusing it a bunch. That's a little odd. Yeah, well, he's not transfusing the Rift Scuttler. He's transfusing himself from the Rift Scuttler. Uh, well, he's not enough. giving the Rift Scuttler blood. He's taking it. That's very true. Taking that crab blood. Infusing it with his own. I don't think that'd be compatible, but uh, apparently it is. <laughs> Well, everyone's a use everything, I should say, is a universal donor for Vladimir. I guess so. Learned. Yeah, he's type everything. That would be really painful to get transfused by Vladimir, because what does he do? Does he just wave his hands and your blood, like, seeps out your skin and flies over to him? I think it's like when Magneto, like, sucked out Wolverine's adamantine skeleton. It's like that. Ow. Exactly. <laughs> would not be fun. Yep, that only happened in the comics so far, guys. Well, spoiler alert for uh, yeah. the one million X-Men movies they're going to make. You know they like allude to it in uh, uh, Days of the Future Past, but who knows if they'll ever ever actually have that scene. So, Pilot and Sweet pushing ahead in lane. And at this point, things might get a little bit more uh, farm-oriented. Uh, unless we see a dive in top. I don't think you they're... You the reward, though. Yeah, they're not going to be diving trace right now yeah has that flash up and it would be a little bit bold to do that even though they did ha briefly have a small level advantage trace is going to freeze this close to his turret Ixu looking to recall pretty oh no he's not actually recalling this early he does have a tp advantage so potentially snowflower and sangyun could make a play on the bottom side but lira mostly focusing on the top of the map at the time being yeah not getting a ton out of it yet, either. Ixu just hiding. Yep. Threatening the bottom lane, trying to make them a little bit scared. Chaser was over in the tri brush not too long ago, just trying to set himself up for a counter gank if one came in. And meanwhile, this mid lane has been continuously pretty even, just more farming like we kind of thought it would be. And we'll see where Lyra goes now. Uh, Jin Air has some pretty nice wards on the bottom side of the map, so there's not going to be a lot of surprises coming from the Anarchy side, I think, for this bot lane of Pilot and Sweet. Yeah, Vayne has been left to farm alone for quite a long time right now, even grabbing an assist on that first blood. So things going pretty well for the Vayne scaling. And I, you know, I really like Jin Air's composition. I love Gragas Vayne. 
And Gragas Vayne with a Lulu speed buff is going to be able to just chase down anyone. You think about Vayne's passive and the speed that she gets off of that, and right. then combine that with Whimsy. After the Gragas ult, she takes one person down, and there's a 5v4 situation. The cleanup potential oh, for Vayne is huge. Flash. Wow. Nice move on to Snowflower, knocking him back into that brush, and he is Beautiful. dead. Man, that was one of the cleanest ganks I think I've ever seen. And that's what Alistair Vane can do as yeah. a lane that's so scary, is that Alistair can set up kills like that alongside Vane to uh, to properly prep someone for Condemn. And remember Snowflower used his flash on that kill for GBM. Just about to come up too. Look how close they hit Great that timing. timer. Really good timing. Because they maximized their time to go ahead and get this dragon too uh, by making sure that kill happened as late as possible so that they wouldn't take so much damage from Dragon. Remember, Dragon has been buffed in this patch pretty yeah. substantially in the early game. Yeah, it does a little bit more damage, or uh, a little bit more damage than it used to, a little bit tougher to take. but 33% uh, more damage is pretty significant in the early game. Either way, it's a good move by Jyn Air to get that kill. Like, there was literally nothing Snowflower could do without Flash. He just yep. kind of died, he was there, and then he was gone. Yeah, you have to respect, re respect. You gotta respect that. You gotta man. respect. <laughs> Mad respect for that play. <laughs> it's like when you reflect the respect. Yeah, it's like, right. hey man, you're wearing a nice tie today, and then you're like, no, dude, I like your tie. That's respecting. You're just reflecting <laughs> the respect back at him. You know, nice shoes. No, you got nice shoes. <laughs> Respected. Mad respect. <laughs> oh god, that's terrible. <laughs> Be in the dictionary within two years now. I'm sorry. I actually know that people are going to use that now that you said it too. <laughs> it's awful. Hey, I got nothing but mad respect for that. So that's cool. That's cool. Somebody would have to use it first for you to have that respect, though. <laughs> that's true. You got to respect it right and back. I, and I'm not going to uh, to uh, give you compliments to respect. So. You don't. You don't need to. <laughs> it's already too late. It's out there, man. It's been released into the internet, and thus the universe. Even aliens great. pick up the internet. I'd like to it. apologize for humankind to all aliens. Oh, come on. Th <laughs> that's the worst thing you can think of with humans to apologize to aliens That's the for. worst thing I have to apologize for. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you weren't part of that, though. <laughs> you weren't promoting the respect. <laughs> but I accidentally invented it, so I, I, I know how to take that's responsibility true. for my mistakes, Noah. That's true. I, I know how to take your mistakes and... Turn them into a sort of a Frankenstein's <laughs> monster of a mistake and make it even more devastating. Thank you so much. <laughs> We're a great duo that way. <laughs> Chaser trying to, uh, well, not make a play. It looks like he's going to recall instead. It's just too hard. It's too hard to go under that turret. Oh, or is it? Yeah, it is. There we go. I thought so, well, Chaser. Well, he only has boots right now, so this dive a little bit of flame spitter damage. I think they're just trying to make sure Trace can push up safely. And if they happen to get an opportunity to take out the Hecarim, then might as well go for it. Trace is still oh. here, though. Finds Lyra. Yeah, gets a ward down, too. Ah, but Lyra's going to clear it right away. Lyra's two levels up on Chaser right now. He has been hard farming this game. Well, you can certainly do that with Rek'Sai. You can farm very, very quickly. It's but pretty can... It's a pretty substantial advantage. Yeah. Uh, 12 CS in the lead, and he hasn't been waiting in lanes like Chaser has or helping out with some of these ganks like the one we saw on the bottom side. Hmm. That's interesting, too. Uh, do you think it's going to give him enough of an edge here in the mid game that it was worth it? Uh, I mean, not really with the team composition. They really need to scale into the late game, so... Maybe it'll give them a little bit of a boost, but getting an early kill on the Vladimir or, or Hecarim especially would have been pretty good. And they also didn't do anything with their more dominant lane of Lucian and Thresh. So a lot of, I think, missed opportunities so far. And if you're going to take Rek'Sai, you got to be able and willing to make those plays. If you want to play Rek'Sai like this, might as well just play Sejuani, honestly, and have that much bigger effect in the late game team. Oh, Equalizer goes down onto Ixu. Trace going in, but Lyra's right there as well. Trace in a little bit of trouble here. No one there to help him. Burns that flash. Can he get away? Flame Spitter going. He's running. And we'll see if they can catch him. Ah, uh, no, it doesn't look like it. Just a little bit too dangerous to follow into that jungle. It was a nice attempt, and at least they uh, went flash for flash. Yeah, Lyra actually 
got the flash out really early yeah. in that gank, but that means that he had no tools to CC and follow up on after that. And Lyra probably using his flash a bit too early right there, considering that Ixu actually hit the combo where you ult in and then E somebody back. Right. So Lyra uh, vulnerable. Yeah, I think they might try to. Okay, so he sees him with that tremor sense. And they're going to contest this blue buff. Pilot there as well, too. It doesn't look like there's a lot that Anarchy can do to stop this. Nope. Blue buff going right over to Pilot. Chaser. Or uh, Chaser, rather. Yep. Thought I saw it around Pilot. Snowflower just a parting death sentence. More like a death suggestion. <laughs> At that point, yes. Yep. No one really takes the death suggestion, though. Death comment. Just a small message, a death note, perhaps. <laughs> no, I think that would be quite different, though. I think that sure. death note would be very, very different than what we just saw. He'll take that potato chip and eat it. <laughs> you know, I cosplayed as Kira from Death Note once at an anime convention in San Jose, and I carried around a bag of potato chips. I would yell that line when I was standing next to people and then eat a potato chip very dramatically. I'd like to apologize to the aliens <laughs> for Doa, too. <laughs> Dude, it was it was pretty it was pretty cool. Well, it's pretty neat. Death just goes to show that cool is subjective. <laughs> hey, we'll see what the aliens say when they get here, man. Who knows? Maybe I am like the perfect entertainer for their species. Mm -hmm. I could be like the David Hasselhoff of Mars. <laughs> You never know. That's one of your best quotes of all time. <laughs> <laughs> totally, just, totally just, uh, lacking context. I'm just surprised <laughs> Kanye West didn't say it before I did. <laughs> That's my only shock there. Well, not a lot going in this game. <laughs> as you may have noticed. <laughs> Not a lot well, we, well, we have to speculate about Doa's status. As the, oh, here we here go. Here we go. Equalizer, okay, and Ixalt's away. Well, okay. Thought it was a momentary <laughs> moment of action. Well, Lear's taking Dragon. Maybe that'll... No. I don't think he no, can take I, Dragon right now. Well, not with the bot lane right there. Sweet and Pilot may do something about it. Snowflower there to help out. And Mickey's coming down. Yeah, I don't know. If, okay, well, Teleport coming in. So Anarchy is going to be pushed back for now. They're going to go in onto GBM. Chaser right there as well. He's going to get the stun onto Lyra. Here comes Pilot with a lot of damage on that vein. Easy kill for him. And the ult used by Vladimir. Not enough. Wild growth onto Pilot. He is just tearing apart this Anarchy team. Double kill already. Ixu tries to come in for a kill onto Chaser, but can't get it. That's a triple kill now for Vayne. Pilot chasing. This could be our first Penta of the season. Oh, GBM denies it, though. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Pilot's face. <laughs> He had oh. that. And that's why I love this composition, Doa. Yeah. It's <laughs> really interesting, especially with the Gragas pick yep. coming in. And Chaser didn't even have his ult in that fight, but managed to break things apart enough. They got those little skirmishes where Vayne could follow through. GBM, <laughs> Penta Thief. Oh, I know. Denied. <laughs> no respect given there. <laughs> All right, well, let's just watch one of so, the saddest moments of Pilot's career. GBM flashes right here, and look at this setup. It's just a 5v3 on the flank because Jyn Air collapsed so quickly, and Trace had a good TP to separate the enemy team. Remember that Jyn Air doesn't have Equalizer or Explosive Cask in this fight, and Pilot still is able to position in order to pick up this actual Penta right here. There's the Glitter, Glitter Lance. Lance. Uh, you could see the bolt flying to Vicky. It hit probably 0. <laughs> 0.1 seconds before that auto would have registered. GBM's bloodthirsty, man. He needs those kills. He, he definitely would have gotten that Penta. Yeah, oh, for sure. <laughs> Almost. So close. Well, now Pilot has a Zeal, Bork, and QSS at... 17 minutes into this game, which yeah. means that it is probably over. Yeah, it's looking that way. Yeah, nothing like a 5-0 and 2 hyper carry. Well, the only kill on Anarchy is on their support right now, so things are things could be going better. GBM just going to... You, you steal that too? Yeah, you're just going to steal that blue buff? Okay, <laughs> sure. Go ahead. Go ahead, GBM. 
Pilot's just decided he needs some alone time in the bot lane to. <laughs> Pilot's gonna to AFK in Fountain. I know that's right, dude. Most veins on uh, solo Q would. They would. That's AFK material right there for your average uh, gold or silver league vein player. <laughs> Could extend higher. Who knows? I've had a lot of ADCs AFK after I take their kills in bot lane. <laughs> I'm back, Doa. Well, you know, they're not as sensitive about that in NA, but in Korea, the ADCs, man, if you take one of their kills, even if it's unintentional, they're like, all right, that's it. I'm out, <laughs> AFK. I needed that 300 gold. Game's over without it. Yep. We lost. Yep. So I'm like, no worries, man. I'll just start building damage. And I destroy that bot lane 1v2. Destroy it. Oh, Chaser doing well so far in spite of that level disadvantage he had he did have that play onto the bottom side and helped out with the first blood as well so 100 percent kill contribution rate so far as we close in here yep on 20 minutes and pilot really showing up on this vein but mostly that last team fight wasn't that difficult to play from no. pilot it was just that they collapsed and anarchy really wasn't all on the same page on that engage because the fact that Jinner could win that without two of their most important ultimates available says a lot about Anarchy's positioning in that, as in the setup to contesting that dragon. You know, why doesn't Samsung Thresh just have like a cell phone charger that he throws out instead of a hook? <laughs> Missed opportunity there, I think. Because you can't grab people with with cell phone chargers, Doa. He sharpens the USB Ow. and sticks it like Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> like, get over here. You know, you, you provide martial arts tools for the modern gentlemen of, uh, that's what you need as a spy that's these true. days, right? Yeah, yeah. We know that uh, ganks maketh man, right? <laughs> Mata maketh man. Maybe, I don't know. I'm, str I'm oh. reaching too much for that one. Well, that all didn't work out. Uh, Colleen goes down. The box slows down Pilot for just a moment. Pilot still manages to pick up that kill. Yeah, Chaser actually knocking them out from underneath the turret to set that one up. Again, yeah. Snowflower's flash just about to come up, but not oh, quite there. Here comes Lyra. Lyra trying to make a play here. Gets knocked back against the wall immediately. Pilot in no danger at all. Lyra has to flash away. Here comes Mickey, but Chaser's going to dive right in there. Hemo playing on all three of them. Condemned against the wall, though, is Mickey and Pilot just going to go ahead and heal and QSS out of that. Yeah, just QSing, SSing, little, uh, QSSing right out of the Vladimir ultimate. So Hemoplague not doing much of anything at all to pilot. They're still going to get this tower. Yeah, this vein is just untouchable right now. Yeah, I would not be trying to kill the vein. Vein would have to just... I mean, pilot would have to become OQ to die from here on out in this game. <laughs> GBM also going with the Soul Stealer. Nice. Why not? Yeah, I, I think that you can legitimately snowball off of what they have, and it's going to really do you a lot of favors and when if you're, all of your lanes are winning. If you're going to be stealing pentakills away from your AD carry, you might as well be getting Magi stacks with it too. <laughs> wow. 2.5k gold ahead for Pilot compared to Sung Yoon already. Yeah. 20 minutes of the Equalizer. game. Equalizer. Ixu is in a bit of trouble here. He may have to ult just to get away. Barely doesn't need to use it. Yeah, burning now too with that Leandris completed. So yep. Ixu going to have to Recall right now, and then perhaps oh. use his teleport not to lose too much CS, or he'll hand it over to. He's keeping Lyra. his teleport for now. He bought yeah, home he, guards. Yeah, so. he's had home guards. He went Burke home guards first. So. Yeah, as many Hecarims do. And it looks like he's just going to farm a bit in the jungle anyway, since Lyra and Snowflower are up in top lane. Dragon up in about 30 seconds, so we'll see if Jinair can grab their third. Wow, it's already their third. It seems like. Seems like it shouldn't be that far already in the game, but this game is certainly moving at a bit of an accelerated pace because of the lead that Janair has. All right, more turret pressure going down. Pilot actually having a really easy time wow. of sieging at this stage of the game. You should not be allowed to do this with Vayne this early. Here comes the teleport from Ixu. Trace yeah. going to respond. Mickey. Oh, they have to run. Yeah, Ixu can't come in on this. Lantern, yep, he's going to go ahead and take it. But this bot lane tier two is still in quite a bit of trouble. Yeah, Pilot at uh, 217 CS at 22 minutes and 6 0 and 2. What a game for him. I think he's putting in an MVP performance right now as they go for their third dragon. Yeah, and this is great too to see from Pilot because that has been the question from him is how meta proof is this guy? Can he play? 
some more of these really big hyper carry champions because mostly what he's been doing is poking from the back line, playing a lot of siege based AD carries, playing for disengage and not something that's quite as all in or dangerous to play as Vayne. And while this game isn't the best showcase of his Vayne mechanics because the team comp I think is really effective at uh, hiding a lot of Vayne's flaws, that it's still it's still good to see him hold on, hold up in terms of his laning presence uh, after that lane swap, particularly. Yep. And that turret has 25 health remaining. And Jin Air can kind of close this one out pretty leisurely at this point. Yeah, they they have essentially every advantage. The gold lead may only be 4K, but based on the scaling of Jinair's composition is just the fact that all the kills are on the two carries in this game. So yeah. that makes it particularly rough. Turret goes down. The top side, first tower of the game for Anarchy. That'll bring them back a little bit in terms of gold. Yeah, still 4K behind in 24 minutes is a pretty big amount, but even more so just the amount of damage that this vein is going to do. And, you know, Mickey's farmed perfectly fine on uh, Vlad, but he just hasn't been able to really make any sort of difference in team fights. Yeah, and in that last little engagement on the bottom side too, he got condemned into the wall so he couldn't follow up. And even then, Pilot is so huge that how do you deal with his vein right now, now with the static shiv completed? Yeah. He's not going to be able to deal with it like he deal dealt with Space's vein, that's for sure. There looks we go, like, big push. Yeah, looks like they should be able to get this mid lane turret. And so second turret of the game for Anarchy. So starting to make a little bit of headway back again. Meanwhile, Iksu gets caught in the top lane. A couple knockups keep him in place for now. Another turret goes down in favor of Janir. In the meantime, there's another body slam from Chaser. Iksu trying to get away. GBM, can he catch him? Doesn't look like it. They're going to get him to safety on that dark passage. So they traded tower for tower right there, but the pressure keeps on rolling. Pilot actually going to take the red buff. They can keep on pushing in mid and top right now. They have all the deep wards they need yep. to safely move these minion waves forward and start sieging. Well, I like that we see Jin Air getting those turrets and then immediately just moving into the jungle and taking the camps as well, too. Yeah, so every time they make a trade, Jin Air actually takes a little bit extra, and over time, yeah. that's resulted in a pretty substantial lead. Jin Air playing very calmly this game. They're not trying to overpress their advantage in any way. They seem to be taking Anarchy pretty seriously after some of their brethren, and CJ and Najin is professional teams have fallen to Anarchy when playing a little bit too fast and loose. You know, and Jin Air didn't really need to camp the mid lane or anything like that this game either. They just focused on getting Pilot well, fed. and They had really good reads on Mickey's roams as well. So Mickey wasn't yeah. able to affect the outer lanes, the side lanes, because every time he came in, Jin Air had a good call, had good comms, and were aware that he was coming, and so he never actually got any of those ganks to work. Either that, or GBM was just roaming faster, like we saw with that first blood. Right. Well, Lyra wandering around in a very sad jungle with not a lot to do. Yeah. And Jin Air can kind of just stall this out until the next dragon or the next team fight, kind of whichever happens first. You take Baron, of course, at any time, too. And they've already got a decent amount of vision around that. Yeah, they do, and they can do it, obviously, pretty quickly with this vein with Blade of the Ruin King also. So that's a pretty major threat right now. They can do it quickly, but they are going to take some damage. They don't have a whole lot of tankiness yet, and here we go. There's oh, a, flash. a flash. Wow, flash, body slam, getting the flash from Sangyun as well. They're just going to dive it. Oh, or not. Okay, yeah, that would have been a little bit far to continue. No need to commit crazy. for that, but trading a jungler flash for two summoners from their AD carry is well worth it for Jin Air. Again, oh, yeah. taking a really pretty preferable trade. Jin Air trying to set up around this Baron. They want to bait it. Pink wards are oh. already in place. There's a ward over the wall. Of course, Anarchy concerned that that could have already been. Oh, Snowflower throws a lantern in first, which is smart because three members of Jin Air were hiding in there. Trace just returning to the mid lane after his Void Staff. Yeah. Oh, GBM. He wants a 1v1. You know he wants a 1v1, Mickey. I know he wants a 1v1, Mickey. Jin Air just kind of pushing him around. Chaser over the wall. And 
Just more pressure. Oh, he uh, knocks Sangin against Wall with the ult. They're just kind of going for anything at this point, huh? Well, I don't think they knew that all of the members of Anarchy Whoa. were responding. Vicky Meanwhile, grabs equalizer. the lantern. Does he get out? He does. Yeah, managed to stay off of the equalizer with the flash. Or uh, no, he just managed to just stay off it. Simply. Yeah, he, he uh, took the lantern out. Ah, right, right. So got out of there in the nick of time. And of course, this tremor sense, it is difficult to catch anyone here in the jungle if they keep on moving around like that. So they have to go. They can fake Baron right now. Yeah, well, they can pretty easily force a fight there or just take it. Dragon up at 15. No equalizer to be used right now, and Mickey has returned. Yep. The return of Mickey. And it looks like they just might send a couple of people to take down Dragon and then just keep everything else pushed for now. Pilot will probably go to help out, but it looks like Anarchy's coming down. And we may see a bit of a desperation fight. Yeah, here we go, actually. Yep, Pilot gonna... just getting some tanking from Chaser right there, as well as a heal. There it is, no yep. contest. Lyra. Oh, Sweet goes in. There's a lot of CC. Oh, wow, on that the was Lyra. a really good condemn. No kidding. That was a really that. good condemn. A really good ability synergy between Janair right now. They're going to go in on Anarchy as well, too. Box drop by Snowflower, but that's going to not stop the Green Wings at all. Oh, Sweet gets grabbed. Wild Growth is going to keep alive, though. Meanwhile, Chaser goes in, helps Pilot pick up another kill onto Mickey. And now Baron's going to be easy pickings for the Janair Green Wings. Yeah, Sweet has to go back, but Iksu cancels his teleport, so he has to deal with the wave at the top side. So many minions set up there already by Janair. Trying to juggle the aggro on this Baron. You can see how fast it's going down yep. with Pilot as fed as he is. Snowfire's going to steal it with Death Sentence. Check it out. Oh, comes in. No, GBM manages to get the Baron and Snowfire gets taken out. Oh, well, nice try. Worth a shot. Worth a shot. Might as well. And Lyra just trying to protect that top turret. But again, GBM and the rest of Jyn'Air just playing it out very methodically, and there's really nothing stopping them now from sort of walking into Anarchy's base and ending this. They don't have the greatest siege, but they don't really need it. No, you could absolutely dive in this situation. They're so far ahead yeah. with this Baron buff that they'll be absolutely fine just pushing on through, especially with the tankiness from Wild Growth also. They have a lot of options. And look at that, Pilot 100% kill contribution rate. Pretty good. <laughs> Alongside Chaser in this game, so both players really making pretty sizable impacts. Yeah. And another BF sword income. Oh my. Oh, gotta get out on the lantern, which you can click as a puddle of blood. Who knew? Science. <laughs> All right. Well, here's a Baron powered pilot just eating this turret. Wow. That was really fast. And they can dive. Chaser gets grabbed. Looks like they're going to dive anyway. Mickey comes in, gets immediately blown up by Pilot. And they don't decide to pursue any more kills right now until Iksu presents an opportunity. Himself has to ult away. Trace comes in as well. Sanyun in big trouble. There's a double kill now for Pilot. He really wants that Penta, but he's not going to get a chance to get it. Not in that fight. He's going to take out Lyra, though. Keeping the dream alive. There's a triple kill. Wild growth on him. <laughs> Well, oh, Anarchy oh. give him the pity Penta from earlier as I they are almost know. certainly going to lose right now. Here he Violet. goes. Well, he's got damage onto Snowflower. There's the, oh, he's a little bit too late now. No quadra, I guess. Oh, well. I think we're going to see the game end right now. So a couple quadras, two quadras in one game for Pilot. Unofficial quadra the second time, I suppose. And at 31 minutes, Jin Air is going to coast in to victory. Looks like they want a couple more kills first. Ixu's going to give him one. Another one, there we go. Mickey wants to give them another kill as well. Oh, Mickey gets a kill on the Chasers. Next goes down, GG and Jyn'Air with an easy win in game number one. That was just really methodically played out from Jyn'Air, looking very strategically yep. tight. They got the ganks they wanted to, teleports were good, team fights were good. Loved the composition that they used in this game. And smooth sailing all the way for the Jyn'Air Green Wings. And Looked a lot like their first game against Incredible Miracle last week in terms of how clean it was. So the question is, is how much are they going to style in game number two? <laughs> is the like, Yasuo coming back? What level are we going to see GBM uh, reach in terms of crazy picks? Is he going to go full Malzahar? Or is it going to go you know, about Yasuo? I'd say Yasuo is about like 70% styling out of 100. 
That's a pretty decent pick still, but it's just not that <laughs> strong. Whereas Malzahar is maybe like eight.